Hello, and welcome to my blog today from the American College of Cardiology in Atlanta. I want to uh, introduce and welcome Dr. Mikhail Pozoboro from the Mid-America Heart Institute, uh, who has presented um, a very impactful paper that is in the New England Journal uh, um, right now, and this is about semaglutide. I hear a lot from patients, give me that pill that makes me lose weight. I want to lose weight. I see primarily the heart failure patients. So, Mikhail, congratulations on your presentation. Give us a little synopsis of what the trial is about. First of all, always a pleasure to be with you, uh, and thanks for having me. Uh, so, maybe a quick word about the step half programs that included two trials. Step half uh, which was a trial of patients with a bisterilated heart failure was preserved to junction fraction, we did not have diabetes. That we presented and published uh, at ERC in August of last year. And then this is the second installment uh, of the program that's that have diabetes trial, uh, which is essentially the same population of patients that have they also have type 2 diabetes. So we sterilized that fat lot type 2 diabetes. And uh, I guess your question would be, why did you do the trial uh, just doing one trial to include patients both with without diabetes and I'll come back to that shortly. But the crux of the hypothesis that was behind the program is that uh, we all know the prevalence of top fat has increased dramatically in the past couple of decades. Um, you know, I can tell you when I was a fellow in training, it was rare for me to see a patient with heart failure who had preserved ejection fraction. Majority of patients had heart failure with reduced DF. Now that the majority of people we see have that. So why did that happen? And there are lots of different reasons for the dramatic change in epidemiology, uh, but certainly one of them, at least in our opinion, is that um, yeah, obesity epidemic had a lot to do with it. And in fact, if you look at the population of patients with half fat in the United States, 80% of them are living with or obesity. And so the hypothesis behind the program was obesity is not just a comorbidity, uh, it doesn't just happen to coexist by accident in the patient population, uh, it may in fact be causing the heart failure. It may be a critical factor in developing the progression of that path. And so, you know, in order to test that hypothesis, we designed this program in which patients were randomly assigned to either some other diet uh, with the target goes up to 0.4 milligrams once a week or matching placebo and treated for uh, 52 weeks for one year. Um, and then, uh, the reason we did two separate trials actually, because part of the hypothesis was that if obesity is in fact the cause of heart failure, then certainly weight loss would be a part of the benefit, probably not the only factor, but an important factor, uh, in the potential benefits of the myoglobin in the patient population, provided that the myoglobin is beneficial, which of course we all demonstrate. Um, <clears throat> uh, but what we knew from weight loss trials, not heart failure trials, but weight loss trials of medications like semaglutide and also other anti-obesity medications like terzapatide and others, uh, is that people with diabetes tend to lose a lot less weight uh, with these medications. There's about a 40% less weight loss in people who have that with diabetes. But lots of theoretical reasons why that could be the case. Nobody really knows or why that is the case. Um, so we knew from the beginning the weight loss was going, likely was going to be and then, of course, there are other things that happen in people with diabetes that have more severe fat fat phenotype, and people with more severe disease sometimes don't respond to treatment the same way as those with less severe disease. And finally, we knew when we started the trial, which was back around 2019, 2020, that people with diabetes uh, are likely to be much more likely to be treated with SGLT2. Uh, and of course, at the time, we didn't have the data for SGLT2 inhibitors and have that, but we, we knew they were going to be tested. And there was, of course, an expectation that they may well be beneficial. And so for all of these reasons, we said, you know what? Uh, the treatment effects may well be different between the patient population. So let's study them separately. Makes everything much more clean when you can separate them like that. Yeah. Pre precisely. In the first trial back in August of last year, where the semaglutide uh, significantly improved the can see or the questionnaire clinical summary score. So that's a part of the KCTQ or domain of KCTQ, which is the gold standard of attesting symptoms and physical limitations. People with heart failure, that's the domain that specifically measures symptoms and physical limitations. And um, 
we showed uh, a nearly eight point improvement on average, uh, which is a very large improvement. Um, and we also showed that, of course, people lost more weight and they had an improvement in six minute walking distance, reduction in inflammation, reduction in anti B, which is an interesting finding with an agent that causes weight loss. And also numerically fewer uh, heart cell hospitalizations and urgent visits. Just to kind of expand on what we found in a diabetes trial, uh, is that as expected, uh, we saw about a 40% less weight loss uh, than we saw in the first that have that trial people with bad diabetes. Of course, patients treated with semaglutide still lost more weight than those that were on placebo, but the difference was about 6.4%. Uh, where it was uh, more than 10% um, a different between the treatment groups in the first trial. But despite that, uh, the heart failure benefits were very similar to what we saw in the first trial. Uh, the improvement in KCQ was nearly identical. Uh, we also saw an improvement in six note blocking distance. We saw a reduction in CRT and a reduction in NT pro uh, which was quite substantial, about a 20% reduction in NT pro And also, just like in the first trial, numerically fewer heart failure hospital patients and urgent visits. Out of 25 patients that had at least one of those events, uh, uh, seven were in the semaglutide group and 18 were in the people group. So the findings on a heart failure side were nearly identical, whereas the degree of weight loss was 40% less than in the first trial. Why do you think this happens? Does it have something to do with the insulin that they're getting for treatment? Uh was there a relationship to those who had insulin and those who didn't? We have not dissected these findings to this extent yet, really. But uh, yeah, that's one of the hypotheses. The wild hypothesis is people with diabetes get treated with medications like insulin and sulfonylureas, which actually make people uh, gain weight. If you don't have diabetes, you're not going to be on insulin, you don't, you're not going to be on FCU. So, yeah, that's one of the actual leading theories. Now, so that's one of the reasons we see less weight loss. But to be perfectly honest, we don't really know. So I was looking at, uh, at your slides and the data. What, what uh, pushes the patient to feel so much better that it's captured on the KCCQ? I know for myself, when I lost weight, I felt lighter. Um, I could do more. And maybe that's one of the things that the drop in obesity does is it makes patients feel lighter that they can do more. Um, cause it, it's not because they were symptomatic from heart failure, they're class two primarily. As you well know, on that point, there is a disconnect between KCQ and NYHA class. Uh, and so if you look at NYHA class, about a third were class three and four and, uh, about two thirds were class two. And let's come back to the discussion about NYHA class in a minute, because in the Lancet paper that came yesterday, where we uh, combined the two products, some very interesting findings about severity of heart failure, the treatment of that. So one third, three and four, and um, uh, two thirds NYHA class two, it's very typical for have that trial. So if you look at the liver, if you look at uh, on Paragon and Embra Preserve, it's very, very similar to what you see in those trials. So that's not unusual, but KTCQ, as baseline was much, much lower than the only seems out of the trials. So instead of having KCQ in the low 70s. It was in the 40s, wasn't it? 40s and 50s? It was in the 50s. Yeah, so these people were really symptomatic and functionally impaired. The six meters of distance was there and low, was about 280 meters. So yeah, it was below, below 300, which is what we consider uh, severe. Yeah, your question is, what exactly gets better? Um, uh, we examined that uh, in the step by step, the first step half by trial. Uh, and what we showed, we actually published it in circulation presented by the American Heart Association in 2023, uh, that essentially every, nearly every domain of TCCQ improved. Um, so the symptoms got better, the implementation got better, uh, quality of life improved, domain improved. Uh, the, um, even the social limitation domain, which we almost never see. Uh, with heart failure treatment, because heart failure limitation is a lagging indicator, and it's very difficult to actually see an improvement in social function. And that's uh, actually been another indicator that this is really substantially effective treatment because uh, not only is there a large quantitative effect, but it actually the symptoms of physical limitation improvement translate into improvement in social function. The largest improvement was in the symptom burden and symptom frequency. It was more than 10 point average. 
Uh, now, to your point about do people just feel lighter, um, you know, is it going to be kind of, as we call sometimes mechanical unloading through weight loss and not really a pathobiology benefit on a disease modification for heart failure. And this is where this trial we just presented in a combined paper uh, in Lancet yesterday really offered some very interesting insights. There was 40% less weight loss in people without diabetes, but the heart failure benefits were very similar. So if this was all about weight loss, you would normally have expected that if there is a lot less weight loss, there would be also less heart failure benefits, but that's not what we see at all. We see that the heart failure benefits are very similar, which indicates that it's not just weight loss. That There's something else fact, going on in here. There is something else going on. Of uh, course, uh, change at the anti pro and p also. Like we know that people who lose weight with lifestyle modifications in the look ahead trial, you know, patients with diabetes who lost weight through lifestyle modifications, the anti pro p one one top. There are, you know, uh, at least theoretical reasons why that would be the case has to do with visceral adipositive and, and the effect it has on, on not very adipositive levels. Here we saw a 20% reduction in anti pro and despite weight loss. Do you think this is anti-inflammatory? Yeah, well, for sure. We know that from the trials, right? We have, you know, a 33% reduction in treatment ratio of 467 for high sensitivity CRP as well. So the anti pro and goes down, so there is the congestion effect. Uh, HF therapy goes down, so there is an anti-inflammatory effect. Some of it is probably due to weight loss, but some of it may be a direct effect. And then the other thing I will mention, which indicates to me at least, that this is not just weight loss. So we did essentially almost all of the public group analysis on a combined uh, step half step and step half step diabetes data because we've had quite as many patients. And, um, and we specified that we we're going to do it that way. And what we saw was people with higher anti pro based line, higher NYHA clots at baseline, on loop diuretics versus not at baseline, with atrial fibrillation versus not at baseline. So all of the markers of heart failure severity got a larger benefit with semaglutide versus placebo with those with less severe heart failure. Now, don't get me wrong, those with less severe heart failure uh, still got a very large benefit. So this is not an interaction in terms of directionality of that, but everybody benefits and everybody has a large benefit. But it was the benefits were even more pronounced, even more impressive than people with more severe heart failure. So they were asking with the magnitude of improvement. And um, despite the fact that these people with more severe heart failure got larger benefit on KTTQ, the amount of weight loss they experienced was identical to those that had less severe heart failure. Right? So these all of these findings got one taken together clearly suggest quite strongly that we can't explain everything by weight loss. There is something else going on, like the direct, you can just with the test that planetary factor, not the effect of the model of body, um, uh, that probably explain what we see here, not just weight loss. I mean, for NT pro BMP going down, that to me is proof that there's something physiologic. Did you collect any echoes? We did collect echoes and that's forthcoming. Uh, we are analyzing that data right now, and we're hoping to present them bloody to that stone. The other thing I will mention, Neil, which I think is of clinical relevance, is that uh, on this actually in the England Journal of Medicine publication, we did do a subgroup analysis looking at people who were or were not on FGLT2 inhibitors at baseline. So about a third of the patients in a diabetes trial were on FGLT2 inhibitors at baseline. And uh, there, was, uh, there were consistent benefits uh, in terms of KTQ improvement uh, in patients who both were and were not an FGLT2 breast and baseline. When it came to weight loss, uh, there was a bit more weight loss in those that were not receiving FGLT2 breast and baseline. Than those That's that interesting. Were. But of course, both groups lost more weight with some other beds and placebo. Again, the magnitude was a bit more in those who weren't on FGLT2 breast and baseline. I think this is very consistent with other um, drug trials, et cetera, that we've seen that the sicker the patients, the greater the benefit, where everybody may be afraid of putting the patients on the drug. Oh, they're too sick. On the contrary, those are the people that usually get the highest benefit. I urge our audience to read the papers, New England Journal and Lancet, when you have that patient in front of you. And what can you do to decrease their obesity, which patients get very troubled with, even though they have a very hard time getting rid of the weight and they, they really want to do it. I hear it every day in clinic. Oh, I am, I am. I'm gonna I'm gonna get I'm gonna get on it. I'm gonna get exercising, you know, I'm gonna eat less. 
but it's so hard to do. Um, and the obesity is a problem in the United States. It's a huge, huge problem. And it's going to be costing us many, many tax dollars, you know, as a society to, to deal with this. So um, congratulations again. Uh, you have spent many years working on this. Uh, I've known you, since I've known you, you've been working on, on the diabetes part of heart failure. So you're, you're my go-to person uh, for diabetes and in heart failure. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Bye-bye.